For some time now, people have been wondering what it would be like if Porsche made a lighter, faster, meaner Cayman and BMW made a baby M car. Well, wouldn't you believe it? Porsche's done just that, and so have BMW. And they've arrived within months of each other. So here we are at Bedford to find out what they're like. some quite specific issues with the Cayman R, but not one of them is concerned with the way it drives. I have some quite specific problems with the name Cayman R. There was a 911 in 1967 called the 911R. It was the lightest, most special 911 ever made. And I always thought Porsche should reserve the R badge for something very special rather than just a slightly lightened, sharpened Cayman. But when you're in it, you just don't care about the name. This is an exceptional motor. This is why the Cayman has got the full repertoire. You want to drive it nice and smooth, use the mechanical grip. It's all there for you. You can carve a line. And you can be so accurate with the car. You can trim the line as well through steering, through brake, through throttle. It's just on your side. But there's another side to this Cayman, and it's it's a complete hooligan. So I'm going to back into this second gear corner and immediately, look at this, oversteer everywhere. And again, it's just... I just can't tell you how much fun it is to drive. And it's so with me. And I'm not really having to try, am I? It doesn't get much better than this. back about the name? No. The name's still wrong, but the car is fundamentally absolutely right. There's a tyre just let it go. Hmm. Oh dear. And so another tyre dies. Can you really compare a lightweight, stripped out Cayman with the new BMW 1M? I think you can because they offer a similar level of performance, although it has to be said, the BMW is a much more usable car. Let's debunk all those it's not a proper M car miss straight away. This is a proper M car. And it also confirms one other thing. M cars are not about engines. M cars are about chassis. This has quite an ordinary engine, effectively a 135i engine. A little more power, that's it. 335 horsepower around there. But the chassis is pure M car. We've got the back axle from an E92 M3, we've got the differential, and we've got a wide track. And I tell you, it is mighty good fun. Does the car suffer from being turbocharged? No, because you come into a corner like this right-hander in second gear, put your foot down and, oh look, it oversteers massively. And we just get a great big, lovely long drift. It's not quite as easy as in the normally aspirated cars, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much more fun. It's got a tight locking differential. I have to say the one thing that does change the character of the car over the other M cars in the range is the short wheelbase. The car's almost square if you look at it. It does mean that when it lets go, it goes moderately quickly. But I have to say, what a two. For the money, it has to be one of the best fun cars that you can buy. I mean, it's just sideways everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Now, I'm going to be objective for a minute. We've done some silly stuff. I think it's a really important car. It comes in below the M3, so it, it's encouraging a younger audience to come and look at M cars, to get excited. I love the way it looks. I know it's a personal thing. The 1 Series is a, is a dumpy little car. I don't get that. However, give it some wide tracks, 
give it these big CSL look rims and it just looks magnificent. It's got one of the best stances of a car that I've seen in a long, long time. Does it feel like an M engine? No, it doesn't, but it provides massive usable everyday performance. That's what we shouldn't underestimate. This car in the real world is as quick, if not quicker, than the E92 M3, and that's something people should remember. An absolutely cracking car. I almost, almost forgive BMW for the X6M. Not quite. <laughs>